So I want to carry on with the flipper and that means cutting up this. Apparently you can cut it up with one of these. Um, proof will be in the pudding I think because I'm bulletproof. There's nothing to lose. I am titanium. Struggle. I'm going to leave him to do that and I'm actually going to do something else because this is going to take a long time. Have fun. Whilst that loser does what he's doing at the moment, I'm going to bring you over to this. This will be a sort of like a, an interim episode, whilst we sort out what we're actually doing. Here is Volta as it stands currently. So I've got the new motor in. Um, this arm, I bodged out of a bit of leftover HCP thin stuff. Kind of thinking it's... <laughs> It's not particularly neat, it could be a little bit better. So the next best thing would be to reconfigure or redesign and remake that part. So that's where this will come in. This is my birthday present to myself that I got just last month. Um, currently it's printing out some barrels because uh, Kat uses this to make D&D miniatures and it actually does a fairly good job. But I kind of wanted it to make and fabricate robot parts, maybe a few replicas. It's been fairly successful. I mean, it's printed chests, chickens, but you're probably more interested in this. So that's the original HDP bodge job. That it worked, but it's it's crap really. <laughs> Um, this is a nice new part, custom made specifically for Volta, uh, only a little bit of work needed to him, but the hub does fit nicely in there, and 3D printed, that's what I wanted to use it for. That also means that I can actually start to think about some of the more complex parts, so in the front corners of the wedges where the um, sort of angle plates meet the chassis and the bulkheads I was racking my brain how to get them to fit perfectly um, I thought about you using um, polymorph the moldable plastic that you just heat up with hot water I thought about just randomly attaching screws in there just to attach it to the bulkheads just anything um, and also epoxy or glue um, I don't know if that would be feasible it, it was an option but with this and with a little bit of Fusion 360 know-how I can actually model some brackets up and use that instead so let's show you how I did that the general idea was to make a set of brackets two for the front two for the sides and two for the top. A bit of mental maths was needed to work out the correct angle for the top plate to fit on. And I also added some five mil diameter dowel type things so I could drill a hole through the actual bulkheads and have somewhere to attach the brackets to. It's a bit rudimental, but I wouldn't have any other way to attach them without using too many screws kind of wanted to avoid using more screws than necessary. That was then transferred over into my slicer software and printed at, I think, 80% infill. It took about three, four hours to get all six of them printed and they came out looking quite good.
ignore this I don't really like it I am working hard to grow it all back um, but for the meantime I'm just going to be budget Zach Bagans I think um, hot off the printer about three weeks ago here is one of the brackets and this is how they will be added to the bulkheads in the chassis so here's three that, that one will go there I think this one goes towards the back and then this one goes on the top and you can see this sort of angle which the um, the panel of HDP I tell you what let me show you so on this side they've been screwed in and the posts have been drilled through here so one side has somewhere to adhere to and that creates a nice tight almost flush panel and I need to do the same for this side you get the idea actually attach the corner brackets to the front um, there's a bit of a panel gap it, it's okay it's okay I don't know if you've recognized this but also the chassis is brand new I recut that because for some reason down this end was a little bit shorter than this end which meant the flipper was probably having a bit of trouble trying to close and I did try to rectify that at the time but I couldn't really see what the problem was until I measured here this gap and this gap so I've recut the chassis and it's kind of pulled it back into place I've also made the wheel ports a little bit larger to not only accommodate more of the wheel um, but also to take out some weight not that it's going to be too much but every little helps at this point so all that's left now is to fit our 3D printed flipper on onto the new motor and then after that we can pick up with oh where's the bloody knife I've been looking for that next time we can pick up actually getting the flipper functional and hopefully it will self right Nice. There we go. You can cut through titanium with a hacksaw. Um, just ignore that. <laughs> <laughs>